Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I remember that one of the scarier things when I was um, learning how to render at the beginning when I when I started my architectural education was creating realistic materials. And I know obviously it was possible. I was, you know, looking at CGI all around me and it looked amazing. And it was probably super intimidating for quite some time because no one actually taught me how to use different materials or how to set them up. Especially because in the School of Architecture, most of us used to use, or still would do, still do, even after we're done with school, V-Ray in Rhino. You know, there's ways that you can create materials and they kind of work, but you're never sure if it works. It's just because you're messing around. It's just because you're experimenting and that's perfectly valid. I would encourage everyone to always experiment as, as much as humanly possible. But if you've ever been intimidated by the creation of materials because you want to make sure that they look realistic this intimidation ends today with this particular tutorial i've prepared several materials for you just to show you how to um, approach them and you know what let me just show you so this is it i have a bunch of them uh, i have a bunch of pavement i have wood and metal and i have uh, one which has a lot more texture in it uh, in this particular one we're actually going to try to use displacement so that um, if you ever felt intimidated by the displacement maps as well we can tackle this there's plenty of ways that this can go wrong but so yeah let's get started uh, i'll show you my rhino setup real quick and you'll see how easy it is to create these materials very very quickly so let's start with pavement one all right fantastic it's actually the one i wanted i'm just going to copy this pad because i'm going to need it right in a second so this is my Rhino setup, just to show you what's happening. I have this surface, which is going to be my little victim. We're going to be applying the textures to it. We have a bench and a chair, just as a reference for scale, just to anchor everything. And I have this white box, which would be our neutral material reference. It would be just white the entire time, so we can have some uh, reference to the fake world versus the real world. And then I have these trees. Actually, this one can I, I can delete right away. Uh, because I will be casting shadow onto the surface so that we will bring a little bit more realism and in the same time we'll be able to evaluate our material in shade and also in the sun. So in the Rhino I've already prepared a perspective, I, I called it P2, so this would bring me exactly where I need to be. Let's get into creating our first material. So what you want to do is you want to open Rhino, so this, this, this not a rhino, you want to open V-Ray, so this thing would show up. Then you see that I have no materials created. The chair and the bench, those are VR meshes, so they come with their built-in materials. So the first thing I would do is I would, let's say here at the bottom left, I will say material, generic, this is what I need and this would be perfectly fine. I'll hit generic, it's going to create it, and I'll just right click, rename, and I would call this pavement one. All right. Now, before we even start rendering, uh, we can actually start looking at the preview right here. The first thing I would change immediately is to make sure that I'm looking at a floor. And the reason for it is because I have a directional light falling on my surface in an opposite direction of what I'm looking at. So it's actually going to show me a lot more clearly if my reflections are working properly. Second thing I would usually do right away is open this bump uh, drop down menu and change this into a normal. I don't want to see you ever use bump maps ever again. If this is something you used to do, ends today. Okay. So we're just going to leave it as a normal. We haven't assigned anything yet. It's going to come in a second. Next thing, I want you to open the reflection drop down because we're going to be dealing with two of these guys right here. And then this little settings icon because it's going to expand our menu a little bit. There's a few options that we need there. Okay. And so in my case, I'm rendering using RTX because I want my CPU to be free because I'm recording this with OBS. Uh, in your case, maybe you can hit CUDA and then you would select everything there is in your machine. In my case, it's just the RTX and the two graphics cards. That's perfectly fine. It's gonna work miracles. And I'm rendering in a square uh, just so that I can use this entire half of my screen, all right? And also with this resolution, we can actually see plenty of detail. Perfectly fine by me. Let's get back to our material. Now, we've set up everything we want it to be. I would make this black instantaneously and you'll see why. You know, I'm just gonna set it to black and I would hit render right away. And as no surprise, I think we're just gonna have a black patch in this particular case. 
No, because we have to assign it. So I can take my pavement, drag and drop until I select my surface, click. Okay, uh, it makes sense that it looks like this. Right now, Rhino, sorry, V-Ray doesn't know what to reflect, what not to reflect. Is it glossy? Is it smooth? Is it not? What is it? He has absolutely no idea. So the first thing that I like to do is play with this thing called the reflection color, okay? And if I slide it a little bit, you will see how it becomes more and more glossy, all right? And if I, or at least it becomes more reflective. So the map that I'm going to put here in the reflection color is going to be the ambient occlusion one. So I would just hit in the little icon bitmap and I would paste my link and I would say ambient occlusion. Click and automatically you would see this map which is black and white and usually there's two types of maps you want to put in V-Ray. One of them bring information as color, the other ones bring it as non-color. This is a map that brings it as, I would assume non-color because it says raw doesn't matter. Everything that is black is going to be reflecting black light, meaning nothing. Everything that's white is going to be reflecting white. So you can already see, I haven't put any detail, nothing, and we can already see a little bit of the map coming through in here. Next thing, I would go and I would put in my roughness map. Hit this again, bitmap, roughness, there it is, bam. It doesn't change that much. But the next step is very important because I'm going to use the same roughness map and I would put it in the reflection glossiness. But before I do that, I want to make sure that when I'm talking about my reflections, I'm not interested in glossiness and keep in mind glossiness is the inverse of a roughness map, okay? But I would say I'm interested in roughness. So I would then right click and copy the map that I already imported and I would come here and paste it as an instance. So what this would say make is that I'll be using the same map in this slot and in this one as well, but instead of Rhino, sorry, V-Ray loading it up two times, it's going to load it just once. So this is why I paste it as an instance. And if I make one change to this one here, this one would apply too. And you can already see that even without a color, even without a normal map, not a bump map, don't forget that, it already looks pretty freaking good. So now I'll come down to my normal map and I would add, and you know what? I can maybe zoom in a little bit so we see it better. Normal map, bitmap, and I'll put in my normal, no bump. And we can see that the detail is starting to come through and I would argue that it is a little too strong. So I'll hit right there so that I can have a, just a zone where I render, I don't need the whole image. And I would go back and maybe dial this down to like 0 0.5, let's say. Yeah, I'm much, much happier with this. All right. And if this looks realistic without you putting any of the color information of your map, you've done your job pretty well at this point, okay? So last step, I'll come to my color, I'll hit bit, bitmap, bit, 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 uh, if you're new to rendering, when you are putting your color information into the color slot, depending on where you get your textures from, this might come under the name of albedo. It might come under diffuse or color. All of these mean practically the same thing. So I'll just double click it and there it is. I have my concrete texture looking pretty good. Now, the only thing I would do, I think it's uh, too big. So I would just, oh, there you go. So I'll just bring my repetition to one. And then in this case, I would just do a full render because Vera needs to do some sacrifices when you're doing interactive. So I'm just going to do a proper render, give it a second, and you see that it looks absolutely fantastic. All right. So I'm going to redo the exact same process just with one of the other materials that I promised that I would show you just so that you can see that it's the same process and you can achieve any material very realistic, very, very quickly. All right. So I would stop this uh, and I hope that we can all agree. This looks great. You know, it looks fantastic. All right. I'm going to create a new material, material, generic. I'm going to call this Let's see, what do we have? 
Do, 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 do. Let's do this stone. I called it pavement three. I'll just copy this link here so I can refer to it very quickly. Right click, rename, pavement three. Fantastic. Drag and drop pavement three onto my material. And it's just because I've done this in the past. I know that the texture is very tight and I think it's just a bigger texture. So I'll put this at 0 0.5 and I would hit my interactive render so we can go through the whole process again. And this should be just gray. Perfect. Exactly what we wanted. Same thing. Open up the bump. I'll make sure that this is a normal map. I would make sure that I'm looking at a floor, not at, not at the generic object. Open up my reflection and expand this. Now, we said that we don't want to work with glossiness, we want to work with roughness so that we can recycle the same map over and over again. So here, here I'll hit roughness and let's set it to black again, just so that we see if our reflections are working properly. Roughness, hit bitmap, I would paste my link because we're looking for roughness, there it is. Okay, almost no change. I will then right click, copy, right here paste as in is in the reflection and keep in mind right now because our reflection color is set to black meaning that all the light that's being reflected is just black so there's nothing interesting happening there but if i put it to white you would see that pretty much everything is reflecting equally but you know that these joints they actually need to be really really dark what is that thing that tells you where the light is being reflected versus not the ambient occlusion map so ambient occlusion there you go and this looks so good and i haven't even put the color information or the detail information this is just from reflection and it or and it already looks absolutely fantastic in my humble opinion you can see that um, even the way it's reflecting different surfaces looks perfectly great it looks natural it looks smooth it's exactly what you're expecting from this particular tile so let me just put in the normal map, bump, uh, bitmap, bam. Okay, same as the previous material, maybe a little too strong. So I'll just dial this to let's say 0 0.5 again. And I'm actually very happy with this. And then the last stop would be to add the color. See, in this case, because this comes from a different company, um, I think this one is coming from either Ambient CG or CG Axis, I'm not sure. But Diffuse, Selected, and this is what it looks like. I'll just make sure that the whole scene renders. And then I'm happy. Maybe it's a little too bright, so I can dial down the camera. So let's say exposure of 14. This actually looks a lot more decent. And I'll just hit a proper render, not an interactive one, just so that we can enjoy the results of this particular one. There you go. I think it looks absolutely stunning. All right, let's move on to the next one, just to prove the concept that the same methodology works for absolutely all of them. And in this case, I will go for the wood. So this is my wood one. I'll just copy that link again. And let's do a speed run. I would just create a new material, generic. Double click to rename it, wood one. And I'll just drag and drop it so that I can apply it to uh, this particular surface. Just bring back the size as normal. Okay, so what do we say? We make sure we're looking at a floor. We make sure we make it black. We make sure that we expand it. We expand the reflections. We expand the bump, but we're not using a bump. We're just using a normal map. Hit the normal map. And now we're good to start importing textures. Make sure that we're working in a roughness. I'll make this white. And I will turn on the interactive render. It's kind of funny because you just, ah, okay, there you go. Working, let's start with the ambient occlusion because this is the one that creates the biggest, aha, uh -huh, it's happening effect. So bitmap, I paste my link here, ambient occlusion. See, you can already start seeing what, what areas are supposed to be very dark versus which ones are supposed to be reflecting the light properly. So I'm very happy with this. I'll come here into my roughness bitmap roughness all right great i can copy this map paste it as an instance okay so even again 
without any color information, without any detailed information in the shape of a normal map, you can see that this looks pretty darn good. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy with this. So if I come here, the reflectance is actually pretty good. It's all black. Okay, fantastic. This, this looks great. And obviously we're missing detail. So uh, I'm just going to make sure that it renders just there. Come into my normal map. Bitmap normal is this one. And I mean, just tell me that this doesn't look absolutely gorgeous. And then again, I want to repeat this. There's no color information. It's, it's just reflection. I, I heard this um, thing some time ago, and it was about how do you get good results in photography and in rendering? And someone, you know, whoever was answering that question, he said, it's all about light, 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 and then light again. So you can see that if you play your cards right with the ambient occlusion and with the roughness map, all you need, that's it. And then just to top it all off, bitmap albedo in this particular case, see it's called albedo. And this looks great. So I would stop it and make sure that we render the whole scene, hit a proper render, and then I'm going to wait a few seconds and the whole thing is just going to look fantastic. There you go. I mean, if this is not great, I don't know what is. Let's just wait and see the final result. Okay, so I waited about 30 seconds and as you can see, it just works, man. <laughs> It absolutely just looks fantastic and stunning. Now, I actually want to move on to a different... Let me just stop this so that we spare the computer. I want to move on to a different material, uh, which is a little bit more interesting because in this case, we're actually going to use the displacement map. If you want this extra bit of realism, displacement is definitely your friend, but it's also very taxing on your machine. This is why I like surfaces like, let's say this one, because you can fake the detail so well with the normal map that you really don't necessarily need to use any displacement. And don't get me wrong, it would be nice. It's just, I'm arguing it's not necessary. But some materials like this particular one, because you have something going under maybe five to 10 millimeters, it actually makes a lot of sense to use it. So let's give it a try. Uh, in the preparation for this tutorial, I put this as pavement too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there you go. So again, I will just copy this link so I can prepare my material. I will come down here, generic, and I would call this uh, pavement two. drag and drop to apply it, start the interactive render so we can all observe everything happening, not just here in the small sample screen, but also in the big one. So make sure we're looking at a floor, make sure that our bump is a normal map, expand the reflection, expand everything, and make sure we're using with roughness, the reflection color, put it in white, and the color of the material, let's just put it black for now. All right, we said Ambient occlusion, the biggest wow factor so far. So I will just paste this ambient occlusion right there waiting for me. Okay. Looking good already. A little bit creepy, but good. Next one, roughness, bitmap, uh, blah, 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 blah. roughness, great. I would right click, copy, reflection, roughness, right click, paste as an instance. Okay, so far so good. I like the look of this. Let's just limit it to a small zone. And you can see that these places look real because they're actually waiting to go up and down in 3D space. Because this would, by the way, this is what the displacement map, map it would do. It would actually alter the geometry. Anyway, so let's just finish our little procedure here. Normal map. Normal map. Great. And I'll be honest. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I could leave it at this and it would look great. I would maybe just add the actual color. Mobito. Did I uh, put the wrong one? Yeah, I think I did. Do, do, do. No, Mobito. Maybe just my scene is too bright? No, it's not. 
okay no no this is it and it kind of looks cool but you can actually feel the fakery right like you can feel that this is too flat and it's not supposed to you can feel that it wants to go lower okay how do you do this placement in v-ray for rhino they have a new node by the way so here in, in the tab i have open v-ray and if i select the surface that i want to alter i would come here and use this displacement function so when i click it uh, and i'm just going to prepare myself here because these are all the objects that i have like the the trees the chairs and the, the bench but the moment i click it it will create a displacement here and i'll just double click and call this pavement 2 okay uh oh maybe pavement 2 displacement okay so maybe you cannot just have, maybe you just cannot have the same name displacement 2 it's applied to this surface and i'm just going to leave it to normal displacement and i'm just going to apply the map okay so the texture slot bitmap it would open here usually you have a map called displacement and this is the one that you would plug in if you have an exr file it's a higher quality just let's just leave it at that for now this is a tutorial for beginners use this if you can and the story so I would just say open and I would go back one one time and first of all I would choose how much of this displacement I want if I'm looking at this photo I would say that this thing needs to go down at least a centimeter all right and the way displace, displacement maps work, I just want you to understand this, is that the white areas or the bright areas, they would go up and the dark or the black ones, they go down. In this particular case, to me, the bright areas, they seem to be 50% gray. So what I th think is going to happen is that this would stay at zero, meaning that it's not going to go up from my surface, but everything that's darker than 50% gray would actually go down. So we, we have to try it out. But I would say that what the amount, I want it to be 10. 10 because my project is in millimeters, so 10 millimeters is a centimeter or less than half an inch. So I would just leave this at 10. And the other thing that is very important is the subdivisions. Now, this is a map that is a resolution of 2K. You see everything that I use here, it's 2K. So... That means that the resolution of this would also need to be 2K, okay? So 248, because this is the resolution, 248 by 248. And I will turn it on, okay? I would create my area because I don't want to render everything one shot. And then I'll hit render, the interactive one. Please be careful because one thing that you don't want to do, usually VRA tends to spasm when you do that, uh, especially in Rhino, is you want to make sure that you stop your render before you make any changes to the displacement map. This is the safest way to do it. So now that I'm happy with what I see or I think I'm happy, I'm just going to hit the render and then wait for it to produce something. Okay. So I don't think that the area here stayed at zero zero and went down i think that actually it went up one thing to verify this would be to just see here yeah see it went into it a little bit so i would stop it and increase this to something ridiculous i'll just do 50 just so that we can observe the changes more easily there you go now this is something more like it but as you can see the map actually moved up all right and if I come here, probably it's going to be the exact same thing. There you go. It, it, it moved up. And this is one of the reasons why I had um, this bench here, just so that I can actually measure if it moved up or not. So don't worry. There's a remedy for this. And you don't have to move your geometry. So don't worry about that. I'll just stop it again. But if you move something by 50, what I found that generally the shift in the negative of half of the amount is what works best. So if, if I'm displacing by 50 millimeters, I will do negative 25, and then I'll start my rendering again. Yeah, see, it works. This is exactly where I need it to be. 
So then I can actually render the whole scene. And you can see that it looks great. I mean, it's displaced. And in this particular case, it's actually the geometry being displaced, not just the effect, okay? If I go into my material, so this was pavement two, and if I remove the normal map, which again, by the way, one, I think it's a little too strong, so I'll just remove it completely. So what you're left with is just the displacement. And you can see how powerful this is. I mean, we displaced it a little bit, and it already looks absolutely great. Of course, this is in combination with all the reflections, but th this is amazing. So if I turn it on again, and I don't need to render the whole thing, let me just choose a small area right there. And if I dial it down to like 0 0.5 again, I think I'm actually very, very happy. There you go, I'm happy with this. So let me stop the interactive and run a proper render so that we can enjoy the results of this. And through the miracle of post-production, we are done. All right, let's 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 just zoom in. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm, I'm very happy with this. And let's do one last material. Let's do this metal siding. This was, if I'm not mistaken, this was metal. This was metal one. All right, let's do this one. So I'll copy, cop, I will copy my link again. Create a new material, generic, double click to rename it, metal one. Now, uh, keep in mind that you can, and you should turn off the displacement right now. So I'll just select this one and turn it off so that while I'm experimenting, I don't displace things the way I don't want them to be displaced. So metal one, open the bump, change it to normal, expand the reflection, make sure we're using roughness and then expand this everything make sure that you are setting the color to black and the view to floor make this huh? again let's start with the ambient occlusion this is the big wow right and make sure let's that we just put it here and there's something that i noticed about the size of this texture is that it's uh it's not a square it's a rectangle so that means that it's let's say two meters by one meter, but I'm not sure in which direction. So I will put this as one meter here and we're just gonna find through trial and error. Interactive render, turn this thing on. So while this is beginning, I can actually go and look for my ambient occlusion, bitmap, paste my link. So ambient occlusion. Let's just see, maybe it's the other way around. So if I put this to be a thousand and this to be 2000, and because we're rendering in GPU, most likely we need to stop it and then start it again. Yeah, okay, the other way around was actually fine. 2000 by 1000, okay, fantastic. Interactive render, great. You know what, we're just gonna deal with this. Okay, next up, the Reflection roughness, so we're looking for the roughness map and roughness. There it is, already looking absolutely great. Right click, copy, right click, paste as an instance. Thank you very much. I'll turn, put the normal map in place. Normal. And let me guess, one is a little too much, maybe. Yep, yeah, as, as always, it's, it's just just tiny too much but you know you see how these bolts already start to look as if they're extruding or they're kind of pr protruding above it but they're not it's just faking the detail but hey i would take that that's, that's actually very nice uh so i would just put this at 0 0.5 like everything else because we will be applying displacement to this as well and then finally you know what i'll just leave the color at the end so let's make sure that we render the whole scene Great, anyways, I'll stop it. So if I wanna create a different displacement for this particular surface, I will select it again, and then I would hit displacement again. This would create a completely new one, and it would disassociate the previously assigned displacement from the surface. So displacement here, let's just rename it, metal one disp, because this sounds great. I would go and find the texture. So the I'm looking for height. Okay, so this is an EXR file. I would use this one. It's a 2K 
um, texture. So that's great. As I told you, make sure you don't forget to put 2048 in here. And uh, I want something a little bit more stream. I'll put a hundred and then because we know it's going to be moving it up. In this case, I'll do negative 50 and then hit interactive render. And again, through the power of post-production, we're back. Okay. Okay. But this looks fantastic. All right. So you can actually see how much it came up. And you know what, because this is interactive, I'm actually going to move it a little bit <laughs> just so you can see how sad my scene is. Oh uh, boy. But this is not what we're interested in right now. I'm going to zoom in right here. So you can see that the geometry has been displaced. This is the, this is the whole purpose. This is why we're doing this. And if I'm to look right here, you see that it's displaced and our calculation of the shift to be negative half of the amount just works like a charm. Man, this is great. Okay. And again, we haven't put the color information in. I just want to make sure that I go back to my perspective. Woohoo. Come on. And then I'll go back to my material, metal one. And then I would put my color information in. Look at how sad this roof is, but also how realistically looking it is. In my case, if I was thinking the sun is somewhere there. All right, great. So you can see how good all of this reflection is. All right. And let's just do it one last time. Final render. All right. I mean, you cannot tell me that this doesn't look great. So this concludes this very, 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 very quick tutorial about how to create realistic materials in V-Ray for Rhino. This was the version of V-Ray 6, by the way, if your menu looks a little bit different, it's possible because you're in Rhino 5 or hopefully not an earlier version. Don't do this to yourself. And I really hope that you don't feel intimidated by creating realistically looking materials anymore. I would put some links in the description as to where you can find free and paid versions of these materials. Uh, there are some that are free, uh, like Ambient CG, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they're, they're absolutely great. There's other paid options, which are obviously great. A few tips, by the way, if you are a student, chances are you're rendering on a laptop and even the you know, you still might have a uh, 3080 sitting in your laptop or, you know, one now with the new ones, uh, a 4080 of some sort. But even then, what I would discourage you from doing is going above 2K in resolution. And the reason for it is not so much because your computer wouldn't be able to crunch the numbers if you have one 4K texture, but when a texture is two times the resolution, in reality means, this means four times the pixels, right? Just imagine if you have a square that's one by one meter, that's one square meter. But if you do it two by two, that's already four square meters, right? So it's the same thing with textures. When you move from 2K to 4K textures, that means you have four times the pixels to calculate. Not just this, but you also have four times the size of each texture. So if you applied 4K textures everywhere, especially something that's far away from you, and if you're going to be rendering, I don't know, maybe only 1080p, because you're going to put this on a document that you're going to be presenting online, especially, it's just not worth it. You're waiting for absolutely nothing. I would say, at least for now, stick to 2K textures even lower for, for things that are um, all the way in the back. Unless you're doing a close-up of something where it's actually super important to see all the details, my goodness, by all means, ball out, go for the 4K, 8K if this is your thing, if you're going to be rendering something huge. But this is just a way uh, for you to save time. I hope this is useful. Let me just do the typical YouTube stuff. If you enjoy this, just hit the like button. Share this with someone who wants to learn how to create realistic materials in V-Ray for Rhino very quickly, the right way. And tell me about your success stories. I actually want to know about your success stories. Uh, maybe drop a handle of Instagram down in, in the comment section. Show us your portfolio, man. We would absolutely love to see it. I love seeing good work. You know what? See you on the flip side.